Final Fantasy 15. You all came all the way out here to deliver the goods. Well, thank you kindly. We'll dig it out of the trunk, so you all just sit tight. I actually got the news of this game's arrival the very same day it arrived. All my friends told me that Oh hey, you, you gotta get this game, it's a good game, I've been waiting this for six right. years. Bring but I haven't played a single episode of Final Fantasy really ever before. I've owned every PS console us. there is, but I still managed to skip all the episodes exactly. of Final Fantasy. Why? Well, you know, it was turn-based game and I'm not a fan of those. There were exceptions though, South Park, Stick of Truth and upcoming it's Fracture But Whole. Finally I can say fuck oh, yeah, yeah I've played Final so Fantasy's fun. franchise. Since I'm trying to review the game, I need to review this game independently, not caring all about the other episodes of Final Fantasy, so let's push them aside. The new one doesn't need turn based tactics, but still has the yeah. element of one. That's not all. Many people say you can just, you know, hold your square and uh, smash your circle and you will win. This shit didn't work for me. Yeah, the game looks good, it has beautiful environment and the so-called open gameplay or open world. We'll get to that soon enough. Story is great. I mean, I'm looking forward to see where those four characters end up and how their chemistry works and it's... I, I mean, it's really awesome. But still, this game angers me a lot. We'll get to that as well. It's a story of Prince Noctis, his father getting killed. When the smoke about the Citadel had cleared, the king was found dead. No. Imperials will take Hold over on. the city and now the prince I has to know. find a way to Luna, what? who's going to be what? his wife. Noctis and his three friends will drive around the world yeah. uh, doing quests and other shit. It all feels good. I'm not gonna spoil the end so you can play it yourself. But basically, graphics, good. Story, good. Uh, abilities, there are shitloads of abilities. The fastest way to earn ability points is to upgrade your exploration tree first. The benefits of that are that you can actually earn ability points by riding chocobos, riding your car, making camp or doing whatever. My revelation is the power of the Six Manifest. The stone commands that the king will receive it. In the beginning, the game looked so good. good. I was eager You're to good. see what happens. And but stop. after 30 minutes of playing, common mistakes appeared. Slowly but surely, different elements of the game just didn't add up. Programming mistakes and graphical errors and this feel of open world was narrowed. I couldn't get into the water, I couldn't jump over the bushes. Luckily you can cross waters with Chocobo, which is really really fun. Everything felt so linear and uh, I was strangled each time I wanted to jump off some cliffs. But each time there was an invisible wall in front of me. 2016, man! Traveling mechanics could be better. Most of the time you use regalia as your car to get from A to B. You can yeah. use fast travel as well, but if your skill tree is built to earn ability points while you're driving, you have to take the trip each time. <laughs> Some longer trips might last 7 to 8 minutes, but in that time you will earn 4 to 5 ability points. But driving your car has a massive downside. Well, we're practically running on fumes at this point. You will have to refuel each time you stop, or else you're fucked! Y'all are fucked. <laughs> you all are fucked! If you run out of fuel, there are only two options. Call Cindy to tow the car to the furthest part of your objective, this town called Hammerhead. Or you can push your car to the nearest gas station, which takes 100 years. Waiting system is the worst waiting system in all the games I've played. It's almost night time. Let's call it a day. Especially when there's a quest to take a picture. It's rather dark out. 
Perhaps we'd best try again in the morning. If you will get to your objective at night and there are no camps close by, you will have to wait. Ready or not? Now let's get the next one. Other option is just to drive to the nearest campsite, but it usually takes even longer because monsters on a road will slow you down. No way through. Everybody out. But there is a trick. If you see your red danger bar emerging, just press square, car will turn around. Right 20 seconds or so, turn around again and boom, the monsters are gone. I know that you can use campsites to pass time, but if you're aiming to double your XP, you will just have to wait. Doubling up to reach higher levels faster, it's actually fairly easy. By doing side quests only, you can add up XP really fast. Once you have the perfect amount needed, like 50 to 100,000 XP, just go and spend the night in this expensive hotel. Almost night. Night will fall. Dude, stop it's pissing me night. off. Well, it's daytime. Till... It's not night even dark will... out. We have only one minute left to drive, are you an idiot? And please, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to demolish the game, it's a good game still, but it just pisses me off sometimes. Not at this time of day, at least. There's a way in. I can smell it. The Empire sniffed it out ages it ago. It just feels that some segments are poorly executed and poorly programmed. Usually, you will have to take a correct road in the quests just to make the quests go further and further. If you choose another bath, the dialogue doesn't continue even if you're following the person. See what I mean? The mission doesn't continue until you go to the other side. That feels just so linear. Why? They've set up an inspection point. If the road ahead's blocked, then we find a way around. What I enjoy the most are the boss battles. Those are epic. Bosses are big as fuck. The sheer size of them is just massive and you feel tiny and puny and almost feels like impossible to beat them. After seeing this creepy bird, yeah, this creepy bird right here, I was sure I'm going to battle him in the future. Constantly worrying about the amount of potions I'm carrying just keeps you sharp. I'm not saying that fighting system is bad, at least it's not turn based. But I still manage to waste a lot of potions and phoenix ups. That might be because I'm not that good. The fuck is on your head? The fuck is it, man? I'm Jonah Boy! <laughs> the fuck you saying, bitch? The fuck you saying? There is no right answer, isn't there? It took me a while to figure out how to craft spells and magic, but when I finally did, I was really happy. First of all, you get two trophies. Second of all, magic is powerful. You can destroy creatures with ease. Just keep in mind not to waste them. Save them for boss battles. Loading times. Loading times are horrible. When you first start the game, you will have to wait one minute and eight seconds before the game loads up no matter where you start from. There's a time to fight and a time to flee. This is the latter. When you die, you have to wait approximately 20 to 35 seconds, depending on where your quest is. So, yeah, gonna have to ask you to handle this boat business without me. At Say some what? point, Gladius and other members will leave you alone. So when you have ability trees set up for those characters, you will lose them for those missions. Keep that in mind when you're upgrading your skill trees. Whoa, check it out! See that? That's the Rock of Ravito. I'm like 90% sure. Not 100. You almost know your stuff. Oh, thanks to Jared. Some quests might really piss you off, 
because some objectives are really far away from the road and usually you will have to figure out the road there all by yourself. And jumping around in this wall-like environment trying to find yourself a way in, it really breaks the immersion of open world. I just wish that this game had a better saving system. You can't save in the middle of a quest. Or a dungeon by that matter. Or else if you die at the end fighting the boss, then you have to start all over again. I remember losing at least two hours of gameplay just by loading. Oh god, this dungeon looks like a tapeworm. In conclusion, the game is worth your time. Yes, you will get angry, yes, you will get pissed off. But at the end of the day, the story is worth playing. At level 30, blocking and parrying is your second nature. And the essence of the game, which is story, is definitely worth playing. If I had to judge it, I would give it definitely 8 out of 10. Not spoiling the end, but most of the game's coolest features will unlock after story mode is completed. I am Silly Lama and I will still keep playing. Hope you learned something and hope you enjoyed this review. There will be next to come.